as someone who has been in the back end of hundreds of companies now, I wanted to share with you how I have set up a resource library for internal use at my business. So you probably have a combination of stuff on hard drives, stuff in the cloud, you've got folder systems, maybe some naming convention st strategies or standards or things like that. But it is still hard for people to search and find for a resource that they are looking for and then to use that resource in a standardized way. I think I've found a way to do it that's pretty simple. <laughs> this works using Google, but I think it could probably work the same way if you're using Microsoft products, which is probably the other way that you would be doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the resource library for my company and then actually how I created not just a single standardized, okay, here's the resource, but I created a templatized model. So when you go in and you, you have a consumable resource, so let's say something that you're using to pitch to clients, something that you're using to scope work, something that you're using as a tool or a worksheet or something like that, we've created a secondary linking structure so that somebody can literally click on that and then make a copy of it instantly. And so that they're able to use that like as a consumable resource. It's pretty cool. And it's not that hard. So I'm going to show it to you. So what, where this all starts here, let's not double up me, where this all starts is here. So this is like the mother load and where I put everything. This is going to be what we call the higher writer resource library, but it applies obviously to my company, when some marketing as well. And it's going to have master links first to all the resources that you need here. We have first a naming convention. This is near and dear to my heart because I think that taxonomy is an incredibly important way to give people clarity in their work, especially as they're interacting with a lot of digital assets. So this gets everybody on the same page as far as what these prefixes are. And then there are obviously, you know, definitions of what all of those things are. So everything has a very specific naming convention. And then it also has a category. So we don't just have docs. We don't just have tools, right? We have things that apply to different places in our company that apply to different disciplines that we, you know, regular tasks that we perform, things like that. So that includes SEO tools, content tools, social media tools, scheduling tools, reporting tools, sales tools, staff tools. Okay. You can do as many of those as you want. But having that categorization is really valuable because that is part of the naming convention, as you see here. Okay. So it gives everybody clues all the time. So right away, right away, let me look at you. Putting that structure in place makes finding things easier because it, it creates standardized language, right? So every document is named in a way that if somebody knows, hey, this is a content tool, it's going to be easier to search for because it has that prefix in the naming convention. So right away, I'm trying to give people an advantage as far as hunt and gather, which is something that we all do every day on these digital assets as we do our jobs. So that's the categorization. And then obviously the content type. So in our world, a content type is a spreadsheet a doc, a slide, a folder, and that's a little bit different, or a PDF, okay? So spreadsheets are editable, docs are editable, slides are editable, folders are housing, multiple resources maybe within the same task category, and then PDFs are obviously non-editable. So those are things that are like sell sheets, things that, you know, nobody really needs to, nobody who's going to be using the document needs to edit. Obviously, people who are creating documents and updating documents will need to edit them. And then we have, all right, so you with me so far? So then we've got two categories. We have two linking categories, like I mentioned. The first is the original document link. So this is literally the original document where it lives on our hard drive or on our Google Drive in this case. Okay, so this would be where it lives on the cloud. This is the original version of it. Okay, you edit this, you've edited it kind of thing. Okay, so this is like the original document. But most of the time, when it comes to especially things like content tools, reporting tools, spreadsheets, things like that, you're using the same formatted document over and over again. So you have a couple of options, right? You can make a copy, um, you know, just they can download it to their hard drive and then make a copy of it and then use it immediately out of control. Right, that immediately means the control has left the station. Like you can't track it, you don't have that version of it. Then you get into version issues of editing and things like that and it just like drives me absolutely bonkers. So what I was like, okay, there has to be a way. There has to be a way. So what I figured out is that you can go into Google Docs and you can go in and make templates in Google Docs, which is amazing. And it's not that difficult to do. So literally, you just have to have the Google Doc somewhere in your, I'll show you exactly how to do it. You have to have the Google Doc somewhere in your 
library, like in your Google Drive, okay? And then you can go in here and you can select a document from anywhere in your Google Drive. So let's say I want to make this into a, let's say I make this, okay. So I'm going to do open it. And then I'm going to submit a template. And then these categories, so this is something that you actually have to set up in your Google Workspace. So an admin of your Google Workspace would have to do it. And again, I assume there are similar ways to do this in Microsoft. I'm just showing you all Google because that's what I got. But we have gone through and created categories that dun, da, 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 match the naming categories in our document structure. So in our taxonomy structure, we have naming categories that match the categorization within Google Doc templates. I'm going to show you the same thing in slides, the same thing in sheets. Okay, so all three of those categories of Google resources have access to these same categories of content, which is immensely helpful when you're going to try to find anything, right? Because one of the things you can do here is jump by category. So if you know it's a content tool, boom, jump to that category, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just put this as content because I don't remember even what I added. And it'll say template added down here. And then I can go here and I can jump to, what did I say, content? Okay. And then let's find it. I honestly don't remember what document I put in there. So let's just, we'll click on a random one. So the document will show up here. It'll show up named as it is. And then this, when you've opened it up here, is going to be the template version. Okay. So then... What you do, okay, so stick with me. So we went in, we went into Google Docs Home, we went into Templates, we went into Submit a Template, we associated it with a category, we saved it, now we're going and finding it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, we're gonna get a share link, okay? And then you have to do one more step, and this is where I have these right here, link to create a template copy. So you need to take the link out here the link to the Google Doc or whatever, right? So this hyperlink right here that's coming from your template gallery, and you take out this last part here of the URL, and instead of edit or view or whatever, you just put copy. And it has to be all lowercase. I don't know why, but it does. All right, so then let's test it. So then this URL is going to be a copy version of the template that we set up. So I'm going to put it in here, and then you can see it worked. So it's going to come in here and it's going to say, would you like to make a copy of this template? And so you're going to say, make a copy. And then that copy is going to, so this is a copy. So now the person who just made this copy has this in the drive and they can do whatever they want with it. You have all the document history. You know it came from a template. So you have all the history of that. And then this is just a live document that they can then go edit, customize, use for whatever purpose they need to. So then that's where I have built all of these. So all of these, so there's this giant higher writer resource library. People can go search the library. They can use the taxonomical structure in order to find something quickly. They know what category it is, what content type it is. Then if they want to actually just go in and use it. So say, hey, I'm doing a customer journey mapping exercise with a client. Then they'll be able to go right here, click this link, and then make a copy of it. And they have a brand new version of the customer journey mapping tool that we have in our system. They can rename it for the client, which is how we typically do it, right? Add a prefix with the client name and then off to the races. Fantastic. Changed my life, guys. Hugely powerful. Let me quickly show it to you in sheets and slides, which is exactly the same deal, but just so you've seen it a couple of times. So same thing here. Anything that is a sheet in your Google Drive will be accessible. You go into template gallery, right? And you're gonna just go in and create a template in Winston Marketing, let's see. Submit a template, select a spreadsheet, whatever file you want. Let's say that one, I think that's already in there, but that's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> let's see, I'll try to find one that's not in here. Maybe this one. All right, so you obviously have to have edit access. But it'll go in, it'll create a template, and you do the same thing, right? So you'll take then the URL once you go back into the template. So we'll just, we'll, so you go through those stages. Now we'll just fake it for a second here so you can see this next phase. You'll click into the template that you just created. You'll go get a share link, whatever link, it doesn't matter. It just has to not be restricted, obviously. So you'll go get the share link. You'll just open up some scratch paper. You'll copy the share link in here. You'll remove this part. You'll put copy. And then I always test it. Don't just kind of do it. Make sure you always test. So we'll test right here. Put it in the URL. Perfect. Make a copy. 
All right, so now we've got a copy link of that. And then last, let's just do it in slides real quick. So these are the master links. Let's see, where's slides? To like Google Slides Home. If you just like Google Google Slides, you'll probably find this, okay? So it's just like the home screen for your slides, okay? And then same thing. So you go in the template gallery, make sure you're in the right space. You're going to submit a template, select the presentation. You can do a recent presentation. I think most of these are already in here, so I'm not going to do that to you again. Um, and then you'll select the category that you want it to be associated with. See, these are master categories. So these are the same ones you saw in Google Docs, same ones you saw in Google Sheets. Um, associate the right category with it. Save it. It'll create a template. You go in. You open the template. It's taking a second to do that. You grab a shareable link, uh, not restricted, there we go. Any version of the link is fine, not restricted. Uh, you go in, you copy it over, you put the words copy, all lowercase, open a new window to test it out, and yep, I wanna make a copy of it. I mean, come on, right? Like, fantastic. So what I decided is I was gonna just give everybody in my company access to this and it has also proven valuable so everybody can find anything they need, right? Anything you need, you already have a clue as to what it's probably called. Even if you don't, you just search that spreadsheet and then go in and you can find it. Then, to add a little cherry on top, we actually uploaded and gave access to a custom GPT model of all of this. So if you are looking for something in my company, you can actually go ask our chatbot, which is called Don't Ask Me, DAM, because I was like tired of being asked about stuff, that accesses this spreadsheet. And so if you prefer it in a chat format, you just go in and say like, hey, I need a customer journey mapping template or whatever. And it'll say, is this what you're looking for? Here's where I got it from. Click, make a copy, off to the races. So I think that there are efficient, elegant, and not too complicated ways for businesses to organize the resources that they provide to their internal staff in order to make operations easier. This could probably be relevant nowhere more potently than in marketing, right? And in content, because we do template, we do so many things that are templatized, so many processes that are repeated, and we handle so much content. So strongly recommend that you take all of this, take the process do it, try it. I think it's fantastic. Comment if you need help with it. Um, I have like an SOP for it that we use in my company. So I might be able to share that with you if you need it um, just to, you know, soften the process or flatten the learning curve or whatever, maybe. And I do wish you all the best. Subscribe to my channel if you like stuff like this. I definitely aim to provide as many tools and resources. There's no black box here at Winsome Marketing or at Hire Writer or any of my other companies. We're here to help and share all of our secrets so that as many people as possible can be successful. Thank <laughs> you.